Lord, everyone. And in the Father, and the Son, the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. My friends, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries this morning, let us pause and acknowledge our sins. Lord Jesus, you raised the dead to life in the spirit. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you bring pardon and peace to the sinner. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you feed us with your body and blood. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Let us pray. Draw near to your servants, O Lord, and answer our prayers with unceasing kindness. For those who glory in you as their creator and guide, you may restore what you have created and keep safe what you have restored. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, unit to Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Exodus. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. The Israelites said to them, Would that we had died at the Lord's hand in the land of Egypt, as we sat by our flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. But you had to lead us into this desert to make the whole community die of famine. Then the Lord said to Moses, I will now rain down bread from heaven for you. Each day the people are to go out and gather their daily portion. Thus will I test them to see whether they follow my instructions or not. I have heard the grumbling of the Israelites. Tell them, in the evening twilight you shall eat flesh, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread, so that you may know that I, the Lord, am your God. In the evening, quail came up and covered the camp. In the morning, a dew lay all about the camp. And when the dew evaporated, there on the surface of the desert were fine flakes like hoarfrost on the ground. On seeing it, the Israelites asked one another, what is this? For they did not know what it was. But Moses told them, this is the bread that the Lord has given you to eat. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, I declare and testify in the Lord that you must no longer live as the Gentiles do, in the futility of their minds. That is not how you learned Christ, assuming that you have heard of him and were taught in him, as truth is in Jesus that you should put away the old self of your former way of life, corrupted through deceitful desires, and be renewed in the spirit of your minds, and put on the new self, created in God's way, in righteousness and holiness of truth. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Be my mind, my lips, Lord, and in my heart. When Jesus heard the death of John the Baptist, he withdrew in a boat to a deserted place by himself. The crowds heard of this and followed him on foot from their towns. When he disembarked and saw the vast crowd, his heart was moved with pity for them and he cured their sick. When it was evening, the disciples approached him and said, this is a deserted place and is already late. Dismiss the crowd so they go to the villages and buy food for themselves. Jesus said to them, there is no need for them to go away. Give them some food for yourselves. But they said to him, five loaves and two fish are all we have. Then Jesus said, bring them here to me. He ordered the crowds to sit down on the grass, taking the five loaves and the two fish, looking up to heaven, he said the blessing, broke the loaves, gave them to his disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, 12 wicker baskets full. Those who ate were about 5,000 men, not counting the women and children. The Gospel of the Lord. This is the only miracle, my friends, it's in all, all the Gospels, the miracle of the loaves and fishes. He said the blessing, broke the loaves, gave them to his disciples. It's that same wording that's used in every mass, my friends, is here. But I'd like to reflect on a little statement that the disciples said, five loaves and two fish are all we have. Can I translate that to you? The modern day translation, and even what they meant in nicer words, what good is that? I'm not quite sure that's in the Greek, but that's pretty close. What good is that? That's exactly what they were saying to Jesus, right? Did you ever hear that? What good's coming to church? What good is it? What good's praying? What good is it? Even back then, they're asking questions like that, my friends, aren't they? Yesterday was First Communion. It was a beautiful day. 
for, for the little ones. That's, that, that's a great, that's just a great sacrament, the First Communion. They're all dressed up and they're so excited. Little children, my friends, they get it. It's an interesting thing. But I told them the story and I'd like to share it with all of you. Dave was 39 and healthy, up to this point at least. He was in a men's so- softball league and he was diagnosed with a very aggressive form of leukemia. And one of his good friends, and he's Dave's Catholic and his buddy was a very devout Catholic, said to him, Dave, I want you to pray during this whole time. Be a shield around me, O Lord. And Dave says to his best friend, he said, you know, what, pray that. He said, you pray that, don't worry about it. And Dave questioned him again. He said, don't worry about it, Dave, just pray that prayer even though he didn't really understand what it all meant, be a shield around me, O Lord. He often prayed, especially when he was going through chemo and things like that. And it was, he was in a very aggressive form of cancer. So he had some real valleys in that, just trying to survive in his spirits and just trying to keep his head from being discouraged. And he had four kids, you know, all in high school and that younger. So his life was all sorts of things going through his mind. He went through the series of chemo and apparently some of those times were so aggressive that he had to be hospitalized for certain periods of time. And it was like that the very last night that he was the last chemo treatment and the last night he was in the hospital. So it was also the prom for his daughter. So his daughter brought his date in, they took pictures in the hospital and then, and then the son had some sort of sporting event So the the mom was with them after they left. And shortly after they left, Dave's appendix burst. And of course, that's a, it's it's a big deal, but not a real big deal for somebody that's healthy. But somebody who's just gone through the whole regimen of chemo, everything is depleted. I mean, everything. And there was no way that they could do any surgery. So they put a tube trying to get some of the toxins, but they knew that would not even be close to, to, to remedying the situation. And they weren't even quite sure that Dave was going to make it through the night. Dave, he said, all I remember in that first night was just praying, be a shield around me, O oh Lord. Be a shield around me. Well, day one turned into day two, day three, day four, day five, and to the amazement of the doctors, and they couldn't understand what was going on. There was absolutely no sign of toxins or infections in his body, and they couldn't grasp why, but they couldn't go in and explore what was going on. All they knew was that his appendix burst. Some time went by when he was released from the hospital and things were somewhat normal, was feeling somewhat fine, recovering from all this went in for an exploratory surgery. And when he came out, the doctor said to him, Dave, have you ever had surgery before? He said, no. He said, I had my tonsils out, but I was just a little little guy, but nothing in that area. He said it was the most amazing thing because surrounding your appendix was all sorts of scar tissue. He said, I've never seen it before in somebody that hasn't had surgery. He said, but what it did was it created a shield and all the toxins remained in that area and nothing was released. And he said, isn't it amazing? He wasn't sure why he was praying, be a shield around me, O oh Lord, but it saved his life. And I thought, you know, maybe it's a good prayer for all of us to pray. Be a shield around me, O oh Lord, protect me and my family from what's going on today. It's a beautiful prayer, a simple prayer. When you come up to communion, maybe you can pray that prayer. Be a shield around me, O Lord. Be a shield for my family as well. Another great article I read this past week, and and I've never been to the Holy Land, so maybe some of you have, that in Bethlehem, and I'm not quite sure it was in town somewhere, There was a a church and then attached to it in the back of it, and so I don't even know how tourists even knew about it, was a chapel. And a a religious order of nuns belong there, and they're called the Sisters of Perpetual Adoration. And they just do adoration seven days a week, 24 hours a day. 
And it's a smaller chapel, similar, I'm, I'm assuming, I didn't see pictures, but there, there's a monstrance on the altar. They would pray here. And then probably where the pews are, there's glass there, so you can't get any closer to the nuns or even close to the, to the, um, the altar. But this woman who was a, a writer, and, and I, I found this in one of the magazines, and she said, I was watching this, and I just stumbled in this chapel, and I saw this nun praying, and I saw what their schedule was, and she thought to herself, what, what good is that? Like she's just staring at the monstrance. And, you know, we do that here in our church. And people may ask, you know, what, what good is that? What, what good is it to do that? Well, she went home after her trip to, to um, the Holy Lands and came back and she started doing research about different things. And she found some research in the University of Michigan, and I didn't see this, but she was saying that, and this is true, my friends, I'm just quoting the test results. Spouses that are married 25 years or longer start to resemble each other. <laughs> That's what the test results say. Don't argue with me, my friends. I'm just the messenger. But it was an interesting article because she was saying that because couples look at each other and they examined when they were first married and then they watched as the change took place through the years. And she said, because they look at each other's face often and they bear each other's joys and struggles through life, they start to resemble each other. They start to resemble each other and not only take on their habits, but their actual physical appearances. Interesting, isn't it? And she even took it farther. I don't know if you've ever been to a Byzantine or Ukrainian church. Some of you may have not. It's worth going just to see. It's the same liturgy, they're under the Pope, but it's, a, it's, a, it's all in a different language sometimes. And, and it's a little, I shouldn't say it's the same liturgy because it's a little different and you would probably feel a little out of place, but it'd be good to experience it. But what they do is they, instead of the altar here, they have a, a wall there and then sliding doors, but in the wall that's in front there, they're filled with all sorts of icons. And the purpose of these icons are for the people to look at the icon, the face of the icon, and then we start to resemble that over the years. And she said, you know, now she knows why those nuns do that. They're not only praying for the Holy Land, which needs prayers, obviously, but the more they look on the face of that sacred host, the more they start to resemble it. The more they start to resemble it. And what a beautiful thing, isn't it? Isn't that what we all want? And isn't that what we all need, my friends? And so today, my friends, this is a beautiful gospel. It speaks about a miracle, but really it's talking about the Eucharist. May we pray that little prayer. May it be a shield around us. And may we look at the face of Christ in that sacred host. And he will conform us to that image. God bless you. Let us now stand and profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, 
he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray to our Heavenly Father with these prayers, concerns, and these are needs. That the church may continue to be a beacon of light and truth in the world, we pray to the Lord. For all church leaders, that they preach and teach the gospel with courage and conviction, we pray to the Lord. For all those who have had abortions, that St. Paul's message that nothing can separate us from Christ's love will give them strength to seek reconciliation in the church, we pray to the Lord. That the Lord may heal the sick, comfort the oppressed, and protect us from all natural disasters, we pray to the Lord. For Joseph Galati, may he be welcomed into the heavenly kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Let us now silently offer our own prayers and petitions. We pray to the Lord. Lord God, we come before you in faith and hope. Hear the prayers we offer and grant us all we need to serve you faithfully through Christ our Lord. Amen. Pray, my friends, and my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Graciously sanctify these gifts, O Lord, we pray, and accept in the oblation of this spiritual sacrifice, 
and make of us an eternal offering to you through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so love the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks. As an exaltation, we acclaim, Holy, Holy, Lord God of hosts. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which should be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world. Bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Ronald, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. John, Vienne, St. Pio, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, hallowed be thy name.
Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but in the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Let us pray. Accompany with constant protection, O Lord, those you renew with these heavenly gifts, and in your never failing care for them, make them worthy of eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us and bow, be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and the, all the evil spirits are out throughout the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. Renewed by this heavenly bread that we have received, we are made strong. Send your blessing upon us, O Lord. Protect us from all harm, sickness, and all evil, and lead each one of us to everlasting life. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Have a wonderful week, everyone.